Welcome into the Weber State Wildcat video podcast. I'm your host, Trevor Amicone, and today we are very pleased to be joined by senior forward for the Weber State men's basketball team, Kyle Bullinger. Kyle, welcome to the podcast today. Thanks for having me. It's our pleasure. So, Kyle, the first question is, is the question on everybody's mind right now. What happened at Idaho State? I think the first thing you got to do is you got to give credit to Idaho State. They showed up ready to play. Um, I think it's a team that they went through some, some turmoil this year, you know, with the coaching change and stuff. And the new coach, had, they had, he had those guys ready to go. And they've been playing basketball really well as of late. And uh, I, we were told that we, we needed to be ready. We expected a dogfight, you know, when we came in there. But we just didn't match their energy initially. And kind of, you know, when you have to play, catch up the whole game, you know, that yeah. kind of puts you in a bad way. We had to play really well to give ourselves a chance to win in the second half due to yeah. our poor first half. And, and we came close, but, but we just didn't get it done. And, uh, you know, give, give them credit. Yeah, so what, uh, talk about the trip a little bit. The trip was a little bit odd. You flew out to Sacramento State, then flew back, and then bust up. Uh, what's the, kind of the travel like in the Big Sky Conference? Is that, is that part of what makes it hard to play on the road? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, it, can be, it can be challenging. We've got some different trips this year. Uh, usually, usually you're paired with a couple of right. schools, but this time, like you said, you know, we were down in Sacramento, flew back the next day, and then drove up uh, game day to Idaho State. But it's something that we're used to. You know, I've, and, uh, me, Damian, uh, Darren, you know, guys like that. We've, played, we've had back-to-back -back games before, Friday, Saturdays yeah. in the Big Sky. So this isn't anything new to us definitely didn't have any effect on on the level of play that we showed right. on Saturday so right so not uh, there's a lot of attention uh, uh, on your team and specifically on Damien and and what's it like how's he handling that attention what's it like playing with Damien I think that Damien is handling it as well as a college kid could possibly handle this type of attention um, you know there's a very few kids that are going to be drafted into the NBA that are going to get looks from the NBA and let alone make a contribution in the NBA you know yeah. the numbers just aren't there I have, you know, I'm very biased. I think he's ready. I think he's yeah. going to be a good player, and I'm, I really admire and I respect the way that he's handled it. It is not a distraction to our team whatsoever. Whether yeah. we have scouts coming in practice or whether we find out X amount of scouts were at the game, it doesn't affect the way we practice. It doesn't affect the way Damian plays. He's always had a team first uh, mindset, and it's something that not only me but other players, I think, we yeah. really gravitate toward it. And we respect it a lot. Now, you and Darren and Damian, you've been a while, uh, around the program for a, a pretty good amount of time. What's, mm -hmm. how has, it seems like the team is just so close, so tight-knit as a team. Mm -hmm. How did that happen? I think, it's a cons I think it starts with, with who we bring into this program. You know, we Coach Ray and our coaching staff, we recruit high-character guys, guys that come in and want to do one thing and one thing only, and that's win, and we don't care how we get the job done as long as we do it. And I think when you recruit character like that and you recruit guys that want to win, they find ways to fuse a relationship and to kind of have a locker room and an identity. And it's something that we never, we never addressed as a team to say, okay, here's what we need to do. We need to you know, become a tight-knit group or we need to establish an identity. It's something that when you're the type of person that Coach Ray recruits you know, it all, and, and you would become around others that are, that are similar to you, you kind of develop that um, environment. So. so you, like we said, you and Darren, you and Damian been around for a while. Is this the best team you've had here at Weber State since you've been here? Tough, tough to answer yet. It's mid-season. This is the team that's got the most potential. I would yeah. say that the team that the best team that I was on was probably the year that my the first year that Darren and I played. We redshirted, yeah. and in the first year we played, we went 15 and one in league. I would say that was the best team. This team reminds me of that team a lot, especially with what we just talked about: our character, yeah. our toughness, our togetherness more than anything. So we're hoping to, you know, follow in their footsteps and maybe take it a few steps further. So you guys, as a as a team now, you're halfway through the Big Sky Conference season, a lot of things uh, going well for you guys. Then you have the, the trip up at Idaho State. What's, how do you respond to, the, to that Idaho State loss? The only way that we can respond is, is to get our urgency up, get our fight back, and get our aggressiveness up. If we fail to do that, then it's going to be a difficult road the rest of the way out. Uh, right now, it's kind of Coach Ray has a model that Come February, it's, it's time for players to play. You know, coaches have talked till they're blue in the face. You know, we've heard everything. We've seen every different yeah. type of coaching style in the last four months. <laughs> now it's, the onus is on us, and especially Damian, myself, Darren, Scotty, guys that have been here before, guys that have been in this situation. Yeah. So now it's, it's on us to make sure that we try and improve every day and that we don't lose sight of having fun playing basketball, having yeah. excitement playing basketball, and, and, and a lot of energy, especially when we step on the court game nights. So you guys, halfway through the season now, 
and you've played everybody in the Big Sky Conference. You guys have had that target on, on the back, having the nation's leading scorer being heavily favored going into the season. Mm -hmm. What do you expect to see out of, out of the Big Sky teams the second, second time around? It's not what we expect to see. We know we're going to see everybody's best every, every night we take the floor. Teams get up to play us. They're excited. It's a big game on their schedule. We understand that. We have teams within the Big Sky that are big games on our schedule. We have yeah. learned, and I think teams around the league that have had success in the last few years have learned, that you have to approach each game with that mindset because anybody can beat anybody in the Big yeah. Sky Conference. So let's talk about, for a minute, let's talk about the injury and coming mm -hmm. back and what it's been like for you to come back. That's, it's been a, almost two months now since, since that injury, about a month and a half. About a month and a half, And yeah. uh, you, obviously, the very gruesome injury. Did you, <laughs> yeah. did you ever watch it on tape? I watched it twice. And and I've seen it enough. I you know the wor it wasn't it was worse watching it on tape than when I looked over and saw my arm laying in yeah. the, the direction it was. But uh, yeah, I've seen it. I know that it's been on YouTube and there's been you know a few thousand yeah. hits. So yeah. I always knew that I would make YouTube and it would be because of my lack of athleticism. And it turns out I was correct. So, so when did you when did you see the f first time? When did you see it? On it was tape? I think it was three or four days after yeah. the injury had happened, and they said, "Hey, it's on here." And I had a lot of people calling me and telling me about it, and said, "Take a look." And I, at first, I didn't want to, and I finally decided, you know what? Let's see what it looked like. You know, <laughs> was it as bad as it actually felt? And it turned out that it was. Yeah. See, I'm one of those guys uh, that I <laughs> I saw it and I came in at halftime and we showed the tape and, and and some pictures. And I I play basketball every week I with some buddies, and I I didn't play until this last week. It's been just from watching that, right? Mm -hmm. I'm a little scared. So, what for you? What's it been like to to step back into action has been hard to kind of get that confidence back it was hard to get the feel of, of playing basket playing division one basketball mm -hmm. back rehab rehab was tough the ligament that tore in my elbow is one that that a lot of times requires surgery we decided from the beginning that wasn't an option I wanted to try and come back this year and help the team in any way shape or form um, so we went through therapy had a great group working with us training staff the physical therapy group up there uh, dr. Harrison everybody mm -hmm. We, we decided that we wanted, we were going to make a conscientious effort to get back as soon as possible. Kind of jumped in there a little quicker than I anticipated. I decided to practice, I think it was before the Montana State game, just to see. And went through, survived two days of practice, and Coach checked me in a little bit that weekend. Yeah. And it's gradually gone up a little bit. There's no doubt it was an adjustment going from practice to game. I found myself, especially in the first three or four games, hesitant to go up and and, and rebound like I was capable of or like I had done in the past, not play with the same aggressiveness, particularly on the defensive end and, and rebounding wise. And shooting, you know, it, it, it comes and goes, pain will come sporadically, but it's, it's getting a lot better and it's healing up. Right, so before the injury, you were the team's leading rebounder. That was, this is a big deal to be able to go in there and fight for, for rebounds. Where are you at now? I think I'm getting close. I think, yeah. you know, it's not 100% yet, but it's to the point now where I'm, I'm playing basketball and I'm not thinking about it. And I think that that's a big step that had to be taken. And, and, it, and we're there now. I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to protect it. I'm not trying to hide yeah. it. I'm not trying to do anything like that. So hopefully just playing more games, getting back into the field of it a little more um, will help. But it definitely, I'm happy with where I'm at now as opposed to even two weeks ago. Good. We're excited to have you back. We're excited to, Thank be, you. to be watching you back on the court. So now the team... I think the last couple of years we've had a couple of injuries on this team between you and and Mook and mm -hmm. and Damian last year. Have you seen the team around you kind of improve as you guys have been out and how has that helped? Oh, without a doubt we've had to and it started last year with Dame's injury. Everybody's roles changed respectively along the team and we mm -hmm. kind of rallied together and we didn't get the results that we wanted, but I think we we ended up for a stretch of season playing that type of basketball where we thought we could be you know, um, contending, and, and we were, you know, I think we had a chance to win the league going down to the final week, and that carries over into this year, you know, when, if an injury occurs, it's next man up on this team, yeah. and I think the guys, you know, once I got hurt, Jordan Richardson, Jalon Wheelwright, stepped right in, did a fantastic job, once yeah. Mook got hurt, you see Byron Fulton, Darren Mahoney, step right up, next man in, I think that's a characteristic of a strong team, and there's, and it's without a doubt benefited us. So, so you guys now going forward, what are the weaknesses of this team that need to be improved if you guys are going to make it to the NCAA tournament? I think everything needs to be addressed with starting on the defensive side. I think we must improve defensively every week. I don't think you can ever reach your peak defensively. I think there's always certain areas where you can improve. We're going to do that. 
uh, rebounding goes hand in hand with that. And then one area where we've slipped is our offensive execution. And that's something that we're going to we're going to shore up. That's not near a problem. But the things that require effort, you know, uh -huh. things that you can control, how hard you defend and how hard you rebound. Those are going to be, you know, if we look at the statute at the end of the game and we hold opponents under 40 percent field goals and we win the rebounding battle, we're going to like where we're at more often than not. So with the Idaho State loss, now you've got some work to do if you're going to host the Big Sky Conference tournament. What does it mean to be able to host that tournament? Well, I'd like to say it means a lot, but the first two years that I was here, we hosted <laughs> it and we lost. So I don't know, you know, I would obviously we want to host it. We've got great fans here in Ogden. We've got a beautiful venue, you know, and, every, and the, the people that work here do such a good job of setting it up. It's really a great tournament when it's hosted here and it's and it's something that we want, you know, we want to say that for 16 games, for the long haul, for two months, we were the best team in the big sky. We're not looking at that right now. We're worried about Portland State. We're going to try and take it day by day. But in the back of our mind, of course, if you ask any team in the big sky, would they like to host the tournament? Yeah. Yeah, they'd all say yes. So, so let's talk about you now for, for a minute. What, you, you're from Mountain View, Wyoming. Mm -hmm. What made you decide to come to Weber State? Coach Ray was the reason that I chose Weber State over any other schools that were recruiting me. I, I, we had a good relationship right from the beginning. I think he's a no-nonsense guy, and I could, you know, I was buying what he was selling. You know, the message that he sold, he was straightforward. He was very blunt, and it's something that it's somebody that I wanted to, to be to have coach me. And so I, you know, and the the distance, you know, it's only 100 miles. That really right. didn't factor into my decision at all. It is nice so that family and friends can come up and watch, but my decision to come here started with the coaching staff and Coach Ray and, and the relationship that we built during the recruiting process. So what you said you bought his message. What message was he, was he selling? He, he sold me on a message of toughness, that we were going to out-compete and out-hustle and out-toughen every team that we played against. And I think that those were the things that I wanted to hear. You know, I'm not the most athletic guy. I'm not the highest jumper. I'm not the fastest runner. But I, but I can play hard, and I think that that's something. And when he, and I think he respects guys that play hard, and I think he has found ways to make it work with guys that do that. Look at our locker room; yeah. we've got a lot of high character guys, a lot of guys that do the intangibles. Look at Darren Mahoney, yeah. for example. You know, James Hyatt, guys like that that just that have basketball IQs and understand right. that you have to show up and you got to play tough every single night. And it's an honor to be in the locker room with guys like that. So you are. Majoring in secondary education, mm -hmm. is that still correct? Yep. So what, if basketball doesn't work out, what's the plan? plan actually is to go teach wherever I can find a job. Yeah. I'm student teaching right now at Layton High School. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's a blast, except for I'm up at 5.45 every morning, and that's, that's getting old. I'm getting used to it. <laughs> I'm getting used to it. But it's, it's a blast being around those kids. I really enjoy it. I'm teaching a couple of government classes and a World Save class. I enjoy history. I enjoy politics. Yeah. And I think that being in the classroom, both my parents were teachers back in Mountain View, and it's something that I, that I th really think I'll enjoy doing. It's yeah. something I'm excited and looking forward to do. So uh, you, you just said you're working at 545 every morning to go student teach. You're a student athlete here at the school. That in itself is tough enough. How do you manage all of that? Uh, you have no choice. You know, I've, I learned that you've got it, you know, the time for relaxation and rest will come. Yeah. Right now, I mean, it's you're preparing for your future, you know, your career. So mm -hmm. it's it, it takes priority, obviously. And they've been great with working around me. I told them, yeah. you know, college basketball paid my way to this school. It's what I'm going to do. I've got two months left of it. I'm going to give it all I've got. Layton has worked well with me. Our education department's worked well with me. You know, it's tough. There's a you know every day straight from class to practice. Off a lot of times, but it's it's fun and it makes the days go fast, and, and it teaches individual accountability and responsibility and all that stuff. So, yeah. all right, so now we'll move to some more rapid fire type feature questions. Okay. Uh, here on the podcast, we call them our first date questions. So, nice. so let's start with some favorites. What's your favorite food? Favorite food: prime rib, mashed potatoes. It's it's classic. Yeah. You can't you can't go wrong with no, that, you can't. right? So, what is your favorite place to eat? My favorite place to eat, I'd have to say in my mother's kitchen back home, but if I had to pick a restaurant, well, I went out to, there's a little Greek place called Andy's on Washington Boulevard uh -huh. up north. I had a steak out there the other night with a few guys from team, and boy, that was good. It's yeah. a great place. I work at the Oaks up in, in the summers oh, yeah. up in Ogden Canyon. Uh -huh. I have to throw that one out there, too. Great food, great breakfast. A lot of good spots around Ogden, but those two stand out. Well, there you go. Now you got points with your boss and your mom. Exactly. So see, you're 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 all set. You see, you like politics. Maybe you'd be a politician. Maybe. Given all the right answers. <laughs> all right. So, 
what's your, you don't have a lot of spare time, mm -hmm. but when you do get it, what's your favorite thing to do? Spare time, it comes in the summers. What I like to do is I like to play golf, I like to fish, I like to hike, I like to four wheel. I had a nasty four wheeling accident last <laughs> August, just tore up my back, pulled rocks out of my head, it was bad. But uh, avoiding those makes it a lot more enjoyable and it's something yeah. that I like to do. So. so you've had some nasty injuries and you, you had an ankle injury back mm -hmm. in 07, was it? Yep. So you, do, do those, did that help you come back from this elbow injury? Mm. No, not really. You know, it's you know, I dinged my elbow in a four wheeler wreck too. Actually, I think it's all I, you get. You become used to it after a yeah. while. You know, so maybe it, that maybe it's that. Maybe I'm just used to it now. So, but. so what's your favorite? I don't know if there's a whole lot different from Mountain View, Wyoming to to Ogden, Utah. What's been your biggest adjustment? Biggest adjustment is Mountain View is a town of little, barely over a thousand people. The nearest McDonald's was 45 minutes away. Nearest Walmart was 45 minutes away. Biggest adjustment was dealing with the traffic, obviously, yeah. dealing with you Utah drivers. <laughs> Drives me nuts. A couple inches of snow, I tell you what, and this place prides itself <laughs> on the snow. But uh, biggest adjustment was, was getting used to kind of not city life, but, you know, and being in a community that's, you know, not a huge community, but 80,000 people is big from where yeah. I am, you know, so. Yeah, I like to say that I'm not a Utah driver, but the the best, greatest snow on earth, worst drivers. I agree. Right, yeah. I agree 100%. So what's been your favorite thing about living in Utah? My favorite thing about living in Utah, I really do like the Wasatch Front. I think it's such a neat area overall. Mm -hmm. You know, I met my wife here. We got married up in the valley. There's just so many neat areas and aspects of it, you know, from, so I think Salt Lake's a great city. I think Ogden's a great city, and I like the proximity of all that. I think it's a pretty close-knit community despite its size. All right, so that brings us to the next topic. How'd you meet your wife? How did I meet wife? So you've got bad points with I, mom and boss and now the real boss. I'm gonna have yeah. to, I'll, you know, I met her at a social gathering is what we'll say, okay. a social gathering. Yeah, I don't want to give away too many details <laughs> there. Living the college life, met her at a social gathering. There you go. Yeah. Good answer. Pol uh, politician, I'm telling you. So, <laughs> favorite, do you have a favorite movie? My favorite movie is probably Goodfellas or The Departed, one of those yeah. two. Yeah. Very, very nice. Do you have a favorite actor, actress? Mm, tough call on that one. Favorite actor, Joe Pesci's up there. Yeah. I like Leo DiCaprio. I think he's he's been good. I like Brad Pitt. I think he's a good actor. He he is a handsome man, but I think he's a good <laughs> actor. Brad Pitt. Yeah. So then that, that brings us to the question: If you had a movie made about your life, who would you want to play you? If I had a movie made, I think I'd probably actually have Will Ferrell play me because there's a lot <laughs> of moments in my life that could use his sense of humor. <laughs> Good answer, too. See, I, I would have thought I, I saw Brad Pitt coming mm -hmm. in that answer. But no. Will no. Ferrell, good choice. Yeah. So where's your favorite place you've ever been on, on vacation? On vacation? Uh, my favorite place is Jackson Hole, Wyoming. It's been a lot mm -hmm. of fun. I haven't been anywhere exotic yet in my life on vacation. I really enjoy being in the mountains. I really enjoyed skiing before I started playing. Yeah. Jackson Hole's always been a lot of fun. Went up there last summer, had a great time with some friends, so. Okay, biggest pet peeve? My biggest pet peeve uh, would have to say people that use the, the phrases irregardless, whole nother, <laughs> all, of a, all of the sudden, and the accent that comes with, with being in this great state. Yeah. You know, late in, late hill in filled. Mountains. Yeah, people don't know how to pronounce you know, consonants and they don't yeah. know how to you know, I E L D is not ILD, it's ILD. <laughs> so that's probably my biggest pet peeve. See, you had, a, you had a whole list of them. Usually, everybody we ask on the podcast, that's the one where they take about 10 seconds and go, uh, I don't know. You yeah. had a whole list of well, them. I was ready for that one. I was ready for that one. <laughs> All right, where's your favorite place that you've ever gone and played basketball? Maybe your favorite venue or favorite atmosphere? Mm -hmm. This is tough. You know, my first ever uh, Division One game was at Poly Pavilion before they were yeah. doing the renovations. That was obviously really, really cool. Yeah. Um, Playing, you know, I, when we re, when I was redshirting, we were at the pit, in New Mexico. I thought that was neat. At UNLV was cool. You cannot beat the atmosphere at Utah yeah. State. Hate to say yeah. it, you cannot beat the atmosphere at Utah State. Those guys do a fantastic job up there. We may have to edit that out for the Weber State. You might have to, but they, but they know. It's the they truth. Know. Yeah, yeah it's, the whole country the knows truth. about that right. place, and it's for a reason. Favorite music. Favorite music is old rock and roll. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh yeah. See, we, we thought we got a country out of you. You know what? I do like country music. Not today's country as much. You know, I'm a Garth yeah. Brooks, George Strait. I kind of like the old go. guys, Waylon Jennings, Willie Nelson. But I, I listen to a lot of Led Zeppelin, anywhere from Led Zeppelin, Bruce Springsteen, Allman Brothers, anywhere in that, that type of time period, yeah. you know, I really like. 
Do you have a favorite artist, favorite band? Couldn't name one right now. I'd have to say Bruce Springsteen would be my favorite. That's uh -huh. what I'm listening to the most. Yeah, but it changes. Gotcha. It so, changes. so a few more. What's your favorite TV show? My favorite TV show is Pardon the Interruption. No doubt, uh -huh. best show on television. There you go. Quick to. Do you have like a favorite sitcom, favorite drama? Yeah, I, I love watching Seinfeld. Old Seinfeld reruns are good. Family Guys. Family Guy's a good show. Um, drama, uh, I watched Boardwalk Empire on HBO and that's out there. That was a yeah. good show. I think that won a lot of Screen Actors yeah. Awards or something like that. Yeah. So, Man, you, you and I could be friends. Garth Brooks, See. you're talking about Seinfeld. Man, we quote Seinfeld all the time See. on the broadcast. Absolutely. So, so we'll wrap up with two more serious uh, okay. questions. Who is your hero and why? My hero Tough to say, I've had a lot of people influence my life. Nobody's influenced my life more than my parents. Yeah. My parents are teachers. Everybody that's influenced me in my life has been my teachers, but I try and live the way that not only my parents have taught me how to live, but the way that I see them live, so it'd have to be those two. Is that what made you want to be a teacher? I think by and I think kind of through osmosis, yeah, I was around yeah. it all the time. My dad coached all the time. I was either in his classroom growing up or I was on, on the basketball court watching him teach. Being around the kids, you know, they were always older than me. I thought it was so cool, yeah. and uh, you know, I really enjoyed the relationships that were forged because of it. So I think that, you know, in a roundabout way, it is probably why. All right, and the last one, what is the best piece of advice that you've ever been given? The best piece of advice that I've ever been given is, I would have to say, make sure that you're happy. You know, that times are tough in life sometimes, you know, you don't, you can't always, you know, you gotta play the cards you're dealt, but make sure you're happy. Control what you can control and make sure that you're happy. Great. That's a great piece of advice. Kyle, thank you very much for joining us today. I appreciate today. it. Thank you. It's been our pleasure. And once again, you've been watching the Weber State Wildcat video podcast. You can check this out on WeberStateSports.com. And we will see you again next week. As always, go Wildcats.